and so welcome to how to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Konami learned something. Right, so in this video I'm going to talk about um, the positive things that Konami has done so far in the last two years since 2021. I think it's very easy for us as a community to go on that hate train and to constantly be, um, you know, just talking about the things that they don't get right. Facts. And it's very, very rare that we actually uh, talk about the things that they do get right uh, recently. So I'm going to be talking about the things that I've noticed, really, that Konami has gotten right. I feel this is a thing, things that they've now addressed and that I feel now that uh, the game is going to a good place. So I'll talk about these three things. So we'll go to the next point. And some of these three things are one, break my board, two, format length, and three, ban list management. One, break my board. That is one of the first things I'm going to be talking about right now. So let's go back to the previous slide. So anyways, what do I mean about break my board? Well, since I would say, since I've been playing the game for, you know, since its inception now, um, since the Synchro era, I believe, Konami has been pushing this philosophy, especially in the archetypes, of break my board decks. What do I mean by break my board decks? These are archetypes and uh, decks that focus on negation. Lock time begins. It's been a slowly creeping thing that over time that has come to eclipse everything and it's only i would say in 2021 uh you know last year to this year that we've seen it be diminished in the archetypes that they released but you ask why is this important what does this have to do with um the situation of you view well this is what i want to say um when you i've been playing this game for a long time and one of the reasons i've seen why we have a toxic player base how has it gotten to this point? Yu-Gi-Oh! No, nothing starts out toxic. Yu-Gi-Oh! never started out to be a toxic game when I first started. You know, with the player, people saying the player base was toxic. That was never a thing. So why was that a thing? Um, it became a thing because of Break My Board Style decks. Now, how does this come about? Well, let's give an example of what the Break My Board philosophy that Konami's passed down does to the community and does to the player base so they will release an let's call you know release a deck that can put out 10 negates right that will go into the uh, competitive scene you know 10 or so three four negates whatever but we'll just use 10 just as an average so that you get the feeling of oppression that i'm trying to explain here so it does that um, you as a player when this archetype comes out and it's new you play it for fun at your locals and what does this promote? Well, for, for one thing, right, it promotes you, it promotes uh, players when they see these cards and face against them, not needing to learn about Yu-Gi-Oh! Why is that the case, you ask? Why is there a need to not learn about Yu-Gi-Oh! if we're promoting 10 against our boards? Uh, you know, break my board decks because the one thing the break my board philosophy uh, promotes is ignorance and entitlement allow me to explain so you face this deck and if um the person playing it obviously if the person you uh you know if you're not the person playing it and you're facing it and you have to ask some questions right this will be your answers that you'll get most of the time so you'll ask like, okay, so what do I do against this? Is there a way to um, play against, you know, this play? The person who has this deck will say, no, I'll simply negate it. You'll ask other questions that are critical to, um, you know, the play style or things that they've done during the game. Your answer will be, they will answer you like this. No, I can simply negate it. Um, when you try to talk about points or try to uh, you know have a decent conversation your answer that you get will be this no I can simply negate it do you see the problem here this is where it starts to arrive and this is where 
uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh gets its inf infamous name throughout all card gaming circles of being a toxic player base. This is where it festers, and this is where it came from. It came from this philosophy. You don't know how I hate this philosophy that Konami has been pushing on us for at least a decade now. It's absolutely destroyed this game and destroyed our player base because it promotes that arrogance, that entitlement. Right? Because it doesn't promote you to learn about Yu-Gi-Oh! What's the need to learn about the game if you simply can just negate it? What is the need to learn about an uh, you know, about a player's points or discussions if you can simply, you guessed it, negate it, right? It doesn't promote anything healthy. And um, this is something, and this is why as well, I'm sure when you've been, anyone who's been playing this game has felt like formats felt stale because you'd get one you know deck or archetype that Konami promotes that does this they would hit it on the ban list and then you'd get another deck that comes out doing the same vein that does exactly the same thing this is why formats felt that they dragged on and on and on if you wondered why formats felt long and we rarely had any good formats this was part, this was the biggest contributor, in fact, the sole reason for this, right? Because decks, since every deck was a Break My Board style deck when it was released, they all did the same thing. It felt like, and it promoted that philosophy ever more. It promotes the philosophy of arrogance and of ignorance, right? Which is, which is one of the philosophies I hate the most. And I hate this with a burning passion. I really, really do. Absolutely hate it. I despise it. So yeah. So I'm glad at the start of 2021 that we've um, Konami has actually seen this issue that they've created themselves. You know, uh, yeah. But we've come to address it and in releasing archetypes that don't focus on negation. Because... I've been having this discussion a long time with a lot of people in the community is that a strong, you know, a strong deck doesn't need to have 10 or so negations to make it good. We've had uh, archetypes before that have done this, you know, we have prank kids, you know, look at prank kids. Prank kids are an example of an archetype, you know, that was strong on release without needing negation. Obviously, over time when they got hit, and when things happened, the banners happened, negations were there. But on their initial release, they didn't need all this uh, negation that they got in their later years after the ban list. But you get my point. So that's the first point that I want to address, that I've addressed here. Break My Board has started to fade, and Konami has addressed this at the beginning of, I would say, 2021, which I'm very happy for, and I approve of this. Let's go to my next point. Okay, so I believe I touched upon this on um, part one when I talked about Break My Board, but I'll go to my point number two, Format Lens. So we'll go to the first slide. Why does this matter? Well, here's the thing, and this is definitely started now, I can say, at the beginning of 2021, which is last year, and I've noticed the difference. When, um, you know, decks that don't promote negation are put to the forefront, Konami has been doing this since the start of 2021, um, we noticed that the length of our formats are not so bad. That's a rare thing in this game. But our game's history, as of anyone who's played this game, as long as I have, if you've played since the game's release, what have been Yu-Gi-Oh!'s best formats? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, that's right. The formats that don't promote negation. I find this rather odd. Look at our best format that is heralded one of the best formats of all time, Duelist Alliance format. Was there any deck in that format that promoted negation? No. Let's look at Toss format that we had in 2017. Was there any deck that promoted negation? No. Let's look at 2012. Let's look at, you know, last year. Let's look at the formats we've had there. No one ever talks about this, but I think it's a valid point. Was there any archetype or any specific deck that promoted negation? What's the answer? No, there wasn't, right? Yes, you see, 
Good formats don't need negation. Facts. Right? Negation does not make a good format. That doesn't make this game enjoyable. Right? And that, to me, is something that has definitely improved. And it's something I didn't want to acknowledge, but I've come to acknowledge it all the same when I speak here, you know, a year later in 2022. I was definitely, because being in, ho being in, ho being in the hostage mode from Konami, from, uh, you know, the break my border mentality, has definitely tainted uh, my playing experience and tainted my, uh, my view of the game and has made me very, very cynical. I can definitely say that to be the least. Um, going back to my first point, the issue with Break My Board style, uh, you know, decks is that what it promotes is a cynical and a more a pathetic nature of the game. Um, it promotes this nature and it also promotes, and it promotes ignorance on all levels. Like I will, I will admit as well, you know, like, and I think all of us as players now have this. And it's very difficult for us to accept because we've had a decade now of Break My Board style decks. Um, this has created what I like to call ignorance on all levels. We don't read cards because what's the point of reading them? Because you can simply, you guessed it, negate it, right? There's no need for reading. There's no need for learning. There's no need to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! because you can simply negate it. But anyways, coming back to my second point. Format length has now reduced, and I think that's great. Uh, because it means that when a ban list comes out, and I've definitely noticed this from 2021, it actually matters, you know? Like, we will actually have a different format. Did you know that? Did you know that when a ban list happens, you actually get a different format? Like, I didn't even know this. Like, that's amazing, right? But leaving the sarcasm aside, like, for real... Um, we've actually had different formats when the ban list has been, when the ban list dropped. And I've actually come to now want, uh, you know, I've actually come to appreciate the ban list now, whereas before I, you know, whereas before I was hating it. And this is definitely something I'm going to give a thumbs up to Konami. I am loving that improvement. I'm loving the promotion, right, of, of, you know, just good, strong decks, not negation style decks i'm loving the veering off off of negation i like it let's continue this it's been good for everyone involved and it has definitely helped uh, us heal from and it's definitely gonna help you know the game reach that wider audience you know in the near future right so let's go to our first slide so what do I mean about ban list management? Well, this comes to my first point, which all comes about with Break My Board Style decks. One of the reasons why we had long formats, I believe, or where we just felt like, you know, whereas, you know, as a player, you should have felt like, you know, like, why do formats never end? Why are we always facing the same deck again and again and again and again and again? The reason being was that promotion of Nick break my board style decks that focus solely on negation. It was basically like Hydra. Cut one head and another head would take its place. It didn't really matter what Konami did because they promoted the philosophy of break my board. It doesn't matter what you do on the ban list. You would just face another deck that basically did the same thing the next quarter. So it just felt like it was never ending. That's kind of the truth! Now, with not the promotion, as we see in 2021, of just good, strong decks, what happens is we have a healthier format. We have healthier formats going forward. I want to give an example, um, you know, especially this year, of what, I, of what a philosophy that I really like, that where Konami, what Konami has brought to the table, and one where I've brought a healthier mindset, and I'll also talk about what it has done for us as a community and what it has had us talk about in the community. One of these examples I'll talk about is Branded. On Branded's release, when I saw this archetype, I saw its philosophy, saw how it played, I absolutely loved Branded. 
Why do I love the brand dark top? I love it for the simple reason that it is a strong deck that doesn't need negation to pressure you. Now, I'm sure like throughout this video you've been wondering like why do I harp on, on negation so much? Why am I just a hatred for negation? Like do I not like negation? No, I do like negation, but let me now give you an example of why no negation matters and how it has helped change the community this year to a positive influence is this when you face branded right so let's give an example as i would say before if before you faced a 10 negate style board let's say in 2020 yeah your attitude as the player facing it would be it doesn't matter what i do it doesn't matter what i play it doesn't matter i will lose anyway however when you face branded you will not have these thoughts in your minds you will not say it doesn't matter what i do you will say when you lose against branded your thoughts will be this okay what could i have done here um could i have um chained you know this so that i could dodge you know these effects what did i do wrong and how can i be better are you seeing that progression are you seeing what i'm talking about we're not asking the right questions we're not asking the questions that make us better players make us better i would say human beings right we're actually caring right for our opponent and for the actual game wow right great and this is why i like and that's why i don't like negation because this is what branded brings to the table when you lose against a branded deck you don't think oh there's no ways i could win you would be like no i lost because i wasn't paying attention i lost because of my lack of knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh. i lost because i do not know so if i want to win i need to know about Yu-Gi-Oh. i need to learn the rules i need to learn the game i need to get out of my bubble of ignorance and actually learn this game and this is why i like branded this is why i like decks like branded and i want to see more of them because it gets us out of our bubble because what it has done and now we can see this very clearly is that when we look at the ban list that we've had recently right this is a card called Mystic Mind, right? Mystic Mind is a card that promotes winning, right? If this was uh, 2020 or, be or before, us as a community would praise this card. Why would we praise this card? Because we had, a, you guessed it, a mentality of let's just, let's win. If you win, that's all that matters because, you know, any point you'd make, I would simply, you guessed it, negate it, right? Yes, that's essentially being the thing. But look, but now let's go back to my point now. Look at our community, how we reacted to Mystic Mind not being banned. Look how we came together, right? And how we had a positive influence and a positive discussion. That to me was beautiful. That to me is what this game is about. Since this adoption of less negation, more good and strong decks, we've been having healthier conversations as a community. We're actually talking to one another. We're actually learning from one another. And I know that I have become a better player for it. You know, was I a good player before? You know, in my honest opinion, I don't think so. Because I was in that bubble. I think we were all in that bubble of negation, right? Negation bred ignorance. And because we were ignorant, we didn't need to learn about yu gi -Oh. We were not, not looking at the game itself. We were just looking at just negation and saying that we don't need to learn anything else. If we just stop our opponent, we don't need to learn. We don't need to know about timings, chainings. And whatever and all these things we don't need to learn the game if we can simply just negate it and this is something that comes back to my third point which is bandless management so how does this affect bandless management well for one thing 
This means that our ban list since 2021 have been much easier to deal with. And I've honestly got to say, since 2021, everything that Konami has hit has been spot on. Yes, as a community, we are going to have complaints, obviously, but we've not had things drag on. Like, for example, in this latest uh, ban list, yeah, I will still had ignorance in my brain, and I'll definitely admit to this, and think that Chaos Ruler was going to survive. Why? Because past experience has shown us cards similar to Chaos Ruler, how Konami has treated them. They've allowed those cards to just stay in the game, let it fester, and just leave it there for all time. But we actually addressed it. You know, other parts where we had, um, you know, DPE, you know, where, you know, Fusion Destiny went to two. I didn't really see that happening myself. I thought that, I thought that would never happen. Why? Because past experience has shown us, especially with Konami, especially with the Break My Board philosophy, that they would leave problematic cards. They don't deal with them. So because this has happened for 10 years, when Konami actually deals with the problem, it's a shock. And for me, I think since 2021, I've been shocked multiple times that, wait, Konami's actually dealing with problems? They're actually paying attention to the game? Oh my goodness! I didn't think that was possible. But it is. And overall, these are my three points that I highlight, that I talk about and say, I believe the game is going to a better place. I believe we're going to be in a really good place going forward, and I believe that we can get more people into this game now that Yu-Gi-Oh! can now, I can honestly say, be an enjoyable experience. We can get out of that, um, you know, toxic mindset and go into a mindset that is more wholesome, that is more healthy for us to go forward as a community. And when I saw, when we see discussions about mine, when I see discussions about cards now in our community, they're not, they're not discussions of ignorance, they're not discussions of, you know, simply negate, they're discussions of learning, they're discussions of encouragement. I'm starting to see an environment building that we did, that are similar to what we had when the game first started, in the TCG anyway, and I'm beginning to like it, I'm beginning to like it. I'm beginning to really enjoy this game and I'm beginning also to rekindle my love for Yu-Gi-Oh! for this game as I'm now beginning to actually look at Yu-Gi-Oh! for what it actually is and actually enjoy this game. All right, that's all I've got of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. My faith, right, is in your hands.